By nature, a criminal investigation uh, has to uh, follow a certain dynamic. And that dynamic is one of um, beginning with a theory um, or a hypothesis and subsequent phases of testing evidence to test those uh, theories. There is a large body of literature that shows that these kinds of cognitive tasks uh, can be biased by, by what we call the confirmation bias. And that is that the existing theories tend to color the interpretation of subsequent evidence. In addition, there are some particular aspects of police investigations which tend to exacerbate this tendency to confirm the uh, preliminary hypothesis of the suspect's guilt. And these can be from motivational sources. Um, in most uh, departments across the country, the performance of, of uh, investigative units and of individual detectives is oftentimes affected by their uh, rate of clearing cases. Um, there are oftentimes uh, emotional factors to investigating cases, whether it's contact with the victim whose life has been shattered, or whether it's exposure to very gruesome crime scenes. Um, in some, these combination, this combination of cognitive and motivational factors tends to push what would otherwise be a just a neutral objective search for truth to be one that has more of a, uh, an adversarial aspect to it. Police investigations, because of these structural factors, tend to gravitate more towards finding guilt. And this occurs even with the most honest and professional of detectives. We call this phenomenon um, tunnel vision. We can also call it a, an escalation of error, whereas one preliminary piece of evidence uh, drags along with it um, other subsequent pieces of evidence and ultimately builds an edifice of, of facts um, that seem to corroborate guilt. Uh, unfortunately, if the mistake was not caught along the way, this seemingly strong edifice can be nothing more than a house of cards. Mm -hmm.